Are you oppressed? Are you battling with sickness? Are you struggling with addiction or feeling stuck and you don't know where to turn to? Are you seeking direction or purpose? Or perhaps you're seeking satisfaction and fulfillment? Can God bring a solution to you in just 30 minutes? Oh yes, He can! This program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Tessitani Ministries. You too can be a part of it. God bless you. David knew that when he had the presence of God, he comes to the power of God. And when the power of God shows up, no enemy can Welcome, welcome, welcome to your hour of solution. This is your solution hour. This is your time of solution, your moment of solution. And the solution that I am talking about is not more money, is not more fame, is not more status, is not more houses or more vacation plans. The solution that I am talking about is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the one who loves you so much that he came down from heaven to this earth and he died for you. He lived, he went to the cross, he died for you and he died for me. And on the third day, he rose up again and he said, I am going to prepare a place for you. And he said, I am not going to leave you without help. I am going to go and then when I get there, I will send my spirit, my Holy Spirit to be with you and to be your comforter, to be your helper, to be your teacher, to be your father, to be everything that you need or will ever need in this life. Jesus is the solution that you need. Jesus is the solution that the world needs. When you have Jesus, you have everything. In him, there is no want. Nothing else can satisfy. So many think that they can replace Jesus with some other things. Maybe with drugs. Maybe with very good relationships. Maybe with fashion. Maybe with, you know, addictions. Maybe with, you know, like every other thing. Or every other thing that you are trying to replace God with becomes God in your life. And God said, that we should not worship any other God except Him and Him alone. So I just came to remind you that nothing else can bring fulfillment. Nothing else can bring satisfaction other than Jesus. Jesus said to the woman by the well, the Samaritan woman, Jesus said, if you drink this, you're going to be thirsty again. But if you drink the kind of water that I give, you will never, ever, ever be thirsty again. I don't know what circumstance or situation you find yourself today. Jesus is the solution that you need because Jesus would not only give you a good job. Jesus will not just only give you health. Jesus will give you something more than that. And what is that? Eternal salvation. The salvation of your soul is more important than any temporal blessing. Any temporal blessing. Hallelujah. The Bible says, what shall he profit a man if he gains the entire world but lose his own soul? So thank you for joining me today. My name is Tessie Tani. And last week, we were discussing a very important title. And we are going to continue today. It is give him your all. When I say him, I am talking about Jesus I am talking about the Lord, the creator and the possessor of heaven and earth. The one who knows you, the one who formed you, the one who loves you. Give him your all. I shared last week that some people think that they can partially obey God and still partially obey their own self-will. But God is saying that it's either you give me your all or nothing else. I am not looking for partial obedience. I am not looking for partial love. I am looking for a son and a daughter who I can be their father 
and they also can be my children. He is talking about those that obey his commands. Those who obey the commands of God are those who give God the room to be their father. And they also enjoy God being the son and the daughter of the almighty God. Our opening scripture, which we used last week and we are still using today, is Hebrews chapter 2. I hope you have your Bible. I always tell people this is God speaking. We have so many wisdom to gain from his word. So I want you to grab your Bible as you join me every week. I always look forward to this time with you because it is an appointment, not just between you and me, but it is an appointment with God. He has something for you today that is going to change your life and transform you forever. Hebrews chapter 2 says, we must pay most careful. I'm reading from NIV. We must pay the most, the most. I want you to underline that in your Bible. The most, we must pay the most careful attention. Therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. It says the word we have heard, we must pay careful attention to it, so that we do not drift away. I see so many people who toy with their salvation that they have received from the Lord. They toy with the salvation that they have received from our precious Lord Jesus. But the Bible admonishes us right here in this word of God that we must not toy with the word of truth that we have heard. It says we must pay very careful attention to it so that we do not drift away from it. Some have come to the faith only to drift back to the sinful world. Some have come to say Jesus is Lord only to go back to their old lifestyle of sin. Some have come to the Lord and they were once on fire for God. But when you ask them or when you see them today, the fire is gone, the fire is no more. They've allowed other things of this world to choke the fire. They've allowed other things of this world to choke the word of truth that they have received. The word of truth that Jesus is Lord. The word of truth that Jesus came, Jesus lived, Jesus died, Jesus rose up, Jesus went to heaven, and Jesus is coming back again. They have allowed other things of this world to cause them to begin to doubt the Christian faith and they have allowed that salvation to be choked. Some have turned back to the sinful lifestyle they used to live before they come to Christ. Well, guess what? The God that I am here to talk about today is the God of the second chance. Well, he may have given you second chance in the past. You may be saying, well, I've come to God so many times and I keep going back to the world. He doesn't give up on you. As a matter of fact, me sitting here to preach the gospel message to you is an evidence that God does not give up on anyone. He loves you and is here today to give you another chance. He is not just the God of a second chance. He is the God of many, many, many second chances. His mercies never cease. They are from everlasting to everlasting. And his love has no end. No man can see the end of God's love. No man can see the end of God's mercy. No man can see the end of God's grace. God wants to give you another chance today to make it right with him. To come back into a good relationship with him. So if I go back to what we were sharing last week, I'm going to pray with you in some minutes, but I want to empower you with the word of God. So the Bible is saying right here in Hebrews 2 that we must give, we must pay careful attention to the word that we have heard. And listen to verse 2. It says, Thank you, Father. If the word spoken through angels was binding and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, 
Every word, every command that God gave, everyone that disobeyed God received their just punishment. How shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? He said, why do we think now that we can ignore God's command? And go free. How can we escape? How can we escape God's rod? How can we escape his judgment? If we ignore God's salvation message. How can we escape? Thank you father. Hallelujah. Lord I pray for your people. I pray that their hearts be open now. To receive your word. I pray that your word change them. Your word transform them. Let your word wake them up, O oh Lord. Let it wake them up. Let your word refresh, O oh Lord, your fire in their hearts. In the name of Jesus, everyone, O oh Lord, that has gone back into the world of sin, Lord, I pray for your mercy today, Lord. I ask that you extend your grace towards them and bring them back, O oh Lord to a profound relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. See, we cannot choose to disobey God's commands. We cannot choose to ignore God's salvation message and think that God's wrath and judgment will not come upon us on the last day when Jesus returns. He said on his return, he's going to take those who lived in obedience and those who lived in disobedience will be condemned. So my prayer for you and my belief for you is that you will not be condemned, but you will live, you will rise up to live with the Lord eternally in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to know that those who will be raptured, those who will live eternally with Jesus are those who obey. Not those who come to him today and say, Lord, I give my life to you. And then they are back to start living the old sinful lifestyle of sin that goes against, that violates God's command, God's laws. Not those who are only in church on Sunday mornings and the rest days of the week. They live like unbelievers. They talk like unbelievers. They act like unbelievers. They go against God's commands. And then the next Sunday they are back. You cannot live in disobedience. Six days of the week. Monday, Tuesday through Saturday. And then just show up on Sunday morning in church. And just lift up your hands and say, Lord, I love you. And sing hallelujah. And slap an offering on it. And then go back to your sinful lifestyle. Listen, God is not moved by our words. God is moved by our hearts. I was sharing last week about my son who would always say, Mom, I'm sorry. And then he goes back, repeat the same thing. I come back and say, I'm sorry. And he goes back, repeat the same thing. And he comes back, I'm sorry. After I saw the pattern, I called him. I said, listen, I said, repentance should be radical. When you say you are sorry, you should really realize that you've done something wrong and you should truly be sorry. Just like Felony said, that the best repentance for a wrong act is not to do it again. I said, you truly show me that you're sorry by staying away from that which you are sorry for. God does not joke with his commands. Some people think that that was the God of the Old Testament, the God of the New Testament. You can be a Christian and live life however you want. His grace has already covered for you. God does not change. He's the God of yesterday. He's the God of today. He's the God of tomorrow. He does not change. It is we humans that need to change and adjust our lifestyle. And the Holy Spirit is willing to help us to do so. If only we would just come to him and lay everything at the altar and say, Holy Ghost, help me to live a life that is pleasing to God. 
in the Old Testament, in Isaiah chapter 1, I remember the people would always, you know, they would always come to God and make sacrifices to him. And then they go back and start worshiping other gods. They go back and start living the life that does not align with the will and the laws and the command of God. And then they will come back again and offer burnt offerings to God. And then it got to a time the Lord rebuked them. The Lord told them, listen, I am not looking for just your burnt offerings. I gave the command for you to offer burnt offerings, but the Lord was saying that I am not looking for partial obedience. I am not looking for you to just only come and present the burnt offerings and then go back to your sinful lifestyle. The Lord told them, I am not looking for burnt offerings. I am not looking for sacrifice. I am looking for obedience. Some of us want to make sacrifice to the Lord. We want to show up in church service and think we're doing God a favor. We want to pay our tithes and give our offerings and think we're doing God a favor. But while we are doing all those things, making all the sacrifice, God is looking at our heart. It doesn't matter how many departments we are serving and functioning in church. God is looking. Why men see all the things in the external, God sees right into our hearts. God is looking. Do we have a heart of obedience? Do we obey his commands when no one is there watching? Do we flee fornication? Because we know, not because any man is here, but because I know that God is here and he sees me. Do we resist the temptation to commit masturbation, not because any man is there, but because we know that this word is against such acts. Do we live in obedience to his commands? I don't know what your sin may be today. Maybe you're gay, maybe you're homosexual. Whatever it is, the Lord is here to give you another chance today to lay it at the altar and say, Lord, I cannot be a gay Christian. There is nothing like a gay Christian. There is nothing like a homosexual Christian. There is nothing like a Christian who is also a drug addict. There is nothing like a Christian who is a Christian, but also addicted to watch pornography. There is nothing like that. There are no different kinds of Christian. There is only one. And that is for us to be like Christ. It is for us to be like Christ. The first time the word Christian was used, they said they saw the people acting like Christ. That was how they started calling them Christians. It is for us to be Jesus on earth, to be the light of this dark world. But today we see professing Christians who say they are Christians, but they are also practicing the things that the world is also practicing. A Christian standing for Jesus and a Christian also saying homosexuality is good. A Christian standing for Jesus and a Christian also saying that individuals have the right to choose who they want to be. A man can choose to say, I am a woman. And a woman can choose to say, I am a man. These things are against the laws of God. They are from the devil. They are from the pit of hell. Because God does not make mistake. If you are saying, I am a man, but I'm only attracted to men. So I think I'm supposed to be a fellow man like me. So I think I'm actually supposed to be a, a, a homosexual, whatever it is. You are saying that God made a mistake in his creation. God does not make mistake. When he created Adam, he did not create another Adam for Adam. He created Eve, a woman for Adam. God is the God of order. Everything that he has made is beautiful. He is a perfect God. Hallelujah. So today the Lord wants to give you a second chance to get rid of those strongholds and those false gods and those idols and those things that you are bowing to. He wants you to come to him today in humility and sincerity of heart and say, Lord, even though I've been going to church for years, but I really want to start all over again with you. I used to have fire for you, but I lost it. I want to be on fire for you again. I want my relationship with you to be rekindled, Lord. I want to fall in love with you head over heels again. I want to cultivate intimate relationship with you again. 
the Lord is here today to meet you at the point of your need. He has brought solution to you today. Because the things that we are looking to gain from the world and enjoy the pleasures of this world, they don't bring any satisfaction. You may be feeling satisfied at the moment, but that's only temporary. True satisfaction comes from the Lord. And the Lord is calling us. He's calling us. He's calling the church to become the church of obedience. People who live according to his command. Not people who just only profess to be a Christian, but those who live like a Christian. I remember a, a woman doing cooking and, you know, doing a lot of, you know, chores in the kitchen and the man standing right there by her and telling her, oh, honey, how much I love you. How, you know, I can, I love you so much. There is nothing I cannot do for you. I can even go to the moon and come back just for you. And the lady said, the wife said to him, he said, you know what, baby, you don't even need to do any of those things. You don't need to go to the moon and come back for me. You don't need to sing in my ears 24 hours around the clock that you love me. He said, she said, said, you know what? Just help me. Look at the dirty dishes in the sink. While I'm cooking, help me to be doing the dishes. That is what the Lord is saying. Not just a congregation of people lifting hands to him. While we are lifting our hands and praising and singing, God is looking at our hearts. That is the reason he said in the Bible, he said that those people, they worship me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. God is looking for a heart that is close to him. And that is the heart that obeys God. What does obedience do for us? I'm going to share with you what obedience do for us. And also, I'm going to give you some practical steps, how you can apply this message, how you can start living in obedience to the Lord. Hallelujah. What does obedience do for us? Thank you, Jesus. Number one, obedience allows God to take the place of lordship in our lives. In Ezekiel eleven twenty, the Bible says that they may walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. You see, the only way that we can be God's people is when we live in obedience to him. We cannot call him father and not treat him like a father. We cannot call Jesus master and not live like servants to him. We can't say master. And then we are not obedient to what the master tell us to do. Hallelujah. We cannot say, Lord, you are the Lord of my life. And then we act like he's not even part of our life. We make decisions ourselves. We go wherever we like. We act any, the way we want to. We talk the way we want to. We keep our old attitudes and behaviors. People see us and they can't tell the difference between us. When we were in the world and now that we are in Christ, they can't tell because we're still acting the same, talking the same, behaving the same. But that is not what God wants. The forgiveness that we receive from Jesus, what Jesus expects to see is a new life, a life that is turned around for good. Thank you, Father. So the second thing I will share with you that obedience do for us is remove self and places God at the center. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. When you hide this word in your heart so that you can begin to live and always remember and always live according to that word. You're not thinking about yourselves anymore. You're always thinking about God. When I want to do something, I always think, will God be pleased with this? It removes self and places God. At the center. Number three, it brings us into relationship where we become one with God. Obedience brings us into relationship where we become one with God. In John 15 verse 10, the word of the Lord says, If you keep my commandments and abide, if you keep my commandment, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Hallelujah. Jesus lived in obedience to the commandments of the Lord. And Jesus wants us to live in obedience to his commandments so that we can abide in him just as Jesus abide in the Father. And number four, obedience demonstrates our love for God. In John 14, 21, 
The Bible says those, Jesus says, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me, my God. Did you see the scripture? Have you heard of this before? He says, those, Jesus says, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. So Jesus is saying, it is not the one who tell me, oh Jesus, I love you, even if we cry, even if all the tears pour down when we are worshiping. That is not a proof that we love God. Let's not get it wrong. Jesus says, those who accept my commandments, and he says, those who obey them are those who love me. So I want us to wake up and begin to look into the word of God daily and say, what areas am I sinning against God? How am I disobeying God's commandment? So it doesn't matter whether you've been in the faith for 20 years. It doesn't matter whether you're new to the Christian faith. We should all go back and look at our life, examine our lives. Look at ways we are compromising and living in disobedience. And wake up and ask God for forgiveness. So I want to pray with you right now. If you know that you are still partially living for God and partially living according to the world or sinful lifestyle. Or if you're watching me right now and you don't even know who Jesus is and you've not given, you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. I want to pray with all of you now. I want you to lift up your hands and say, Lord, I have heard your words today. Have mercy on me. Forgive me, Lord. I thank you for this chance that you've given me to make it right with you. It is a proof that you truly love me. From today, Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior and help me to live a life that is pleasing to you. Fill my heart with your Holy Spirit and teach me your ways and help me to live according to your precepts. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Congratulations. Find a Bible-believing church and worship God in spirit and in truth. Join us next week. I am still going to be sharing with you practical steps on how you can begin to live daily, daily, just living daily in obedience to God's command, not struggling to obey him, but it becomes just a lifestyle. You just hate sin and love righteousness. Join me next week. I'm going to share with you practical steps that you can be taking as the spirit of the Lord empowers you and help you also in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of this program. Join us same time next week for another fresh episode.